past two videos were focused on uh, first what's called permuting the corner pieces that's doing a three cycle on the corners to get the eight corners into their proper place and then what's called orienting the corners that was last video to um, flip one corner clockwise and one corner counterclockwise. Finally the last two videos in this series are about the 12 edge pieces. Edge pieces are ones that have two stickers on them, like this number eight and the number uh, six here. And there are 12 of them, so uh, it can it's the most complicated part, this video, is getting the 12 edges into their proper place. And just like with the corners, I'm going to show you first how to do a three cycle, how to take three edge pieces, whatever three edge pieces you want, and, in, and make it like, for instance, this green one goes where the blue is, the blue goes where the red is, the red goes where the green is, and the whole rest of the cube is unaffected. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to do that. It's going to end up being an eight-move pattern that's going to be uh, really useful. And it is going to be based on puzzle number 11 again. Puzzle number 11, to remind you, is a three is the goal is to do a three cycle. Uh, six to, uh, the thing in position 4 wants to go to position 16, the thing in position 16 wants to go to position 13, the thing in position 13 wants to go to position 4. And there was this very cryptic move which does a lot. It put the 16 where it wanted to go, it sent the 13 off to the middle of nowhere, and otherwise though it didn't affect this bottom row at all. And if I undo it, well everything's back. But what if before I undo it, I move this 4 into the place where the 16 is? Now, when I undo A, the 13 is going to come back to, to this position, but, that, but the 4 is there now. And the, um, the 13 is going to come back where, where, where the, the 4 is, and the 4 is going to send, be sent back to where the 16 originally came from, which is great because that's where the 4 wants to go. So the 16 was originally up here, and if I just undid the A right away, the 16 would go back. But by putting the 4 where the 16 was, now when I undo A, the 4 goes back where the 16 came from. The 13 came back from where it was to this position, but that's, uh, that's where the 16 was. And now when I undo it, everything's back to normal. So this, this idea, it's a commutator, A, B, A inverse, B inverse. And it's definitely worth This has come up over and over again. It does take a while to get your mind around this commutator causing the three cycle. So let's take a look at puzzle 18. Puzzle 18... It just wants you to do three moves that put the 26, this edge piece, into the spot between the 25 and the 27 without messing up any of the um, any of the stuff, you know, on, on the bottom. Okay, those are the numbers on the bottom. And I advise you to mess around with these. I will tell you that the, the, the faces are numbered. There's this cryptic number 14 here. 14 is actually the cube in the very center. And if I click on, uh, if I click on it, it does this, this middle layer. This, this move is actually called E. And um, it's, it's looking from the bottom. So this would be, uh, that's actually E inverse, sorry. It's, it's, it's looking, yeah, that's, that, that, that's E inverse. If I, was, if I was looking from the bottom, and this is called E, if you're looking from the bottom, it would be the middle. It's E for equator layer. Now, I push pause, find the three moves, welcome back. So the trick to these three moves is this, this spot where the 26 wants to go, if I take the 17 and I do 17, counterclockwise, otherwise known as F inverse. Now, if I do this equator layer, I can move the 26 right in between the two, and then I can move 
right back. So it's F inverse E inverse F. And I'm going to recommend you just kind of undo that and do that a couple of times to get a feel for it. So 17 inverse, this is E inverse, or 14 inverse, and then 17 clockwise. Whoops, that is not what I wanted to do. Now it's not 17 anymore. Now because of the middle layer changed, it's now the number 15. Also useful, can you undo that move? So what would that look like? Well, I'd have to do 15 counterclockwise. Then I'd have to do the uh, this 14 move, the equator move. Clockwise gets it sort of out there. And then I can do, in this case, it turns actually into 17 clockwise. So that's how I could undo that. Now I'll show you this on an actual Rubik's Cube. So on this real cube here, and you can do this with making your own little stickers. I want to get the two in between the one and the three, and I do the three move pattern F inverse, E inverse. It's actually tricky to move that middle layer, and then F. And it's good habit to do it backwards also because we'll need to uh, F inverse E F. So uh, moving that middle layer, you different ways to do that. Sometimes I move the top two layers and then the bot and then the top one back in order to achieve that middle layer move. Now when you do those three moves, all those other gray cubes get kind of messed up. Let's see what happens when we go to puzzle number 20. In puzzle number 20, the entire cube is solved in the, the, the number version of the cube, except that there are three things. The number 26, uh, the number uh, 24 and the number uh, 12 those are need to be moved around they need to this green one needs to go where the blue one is the blue needs to go where the red is the red needs to go where the green is if I can do just move those three pieces around that seems really useful in my uh, attempt to solve a Ruby's key if I could do that without messing everything else up well, this is going to be very much based on puzzle number 11, and I'll do it, uh, and it's also going to remind you of what we did with the, uh, the three cycle for corners. I want to get the 26 to this spot, and that's from the last challenge. I can do that with three moves. F inverse, E inverse, F. So it's the same three moves as before. I got the 26 where it belonged, which is great, except it messed up the uh, so much of the first of the top two layers. The bottom layer actually uh, hasn't changed much. Only the only difference is the 26 is in this spot. Otherwise, the bottom layer is fine. Uh, the blue cube ended up way over here. Who knows what he's doing? Now, if I were to undo those three moves just right now if I just un undid those those three moves by doing F inverse E F okay so the 26 would get sent back here and the 24 from would come back for, from wherever he came from to that point so that's hasn't done much okay but what if instead I'll do my, the three moves again F inverse E inverse F. Now, instead of undoing it and putting the 26 back where he came from, remember the 12 wanted to go where the 26 started, so I'm going to do a single move here, which is uh, D inverse. I'm going to get the red where the green is right now. And now, when I undo those first three moves, with F inverse E F and now uh, you can see that the 12 is where he wanted to be and now I'll just do one more move which is uh, moving the, the bottom face clockwise 
and look what's happened. It's done a three cycle and everything else has uh, stayed the same. So that's something that's definitely worth uh, practicing. Here it is undoing it. So we do the first three moves. It puts the 26 where it wants to go, messes up everything else. And instead of undoing that move and getting back to the start, I do a D inverse move. It puts the 12 here. So then when I undo it, the 12 goes back to where the 26 came from. While we're at it, the 24 got sent all the way over here. It ends up getting sent back to where 12 was, where 12 becomes, which is where the 24 wants to be anyway. I have to admit, it is a little bit confusing because um, there's so much going on. But it all starts again with the three move pattern, F inverse, E inverse, And then as a commutator, that's kind of like the A move. The B move is D inverse, puts the 12 where the 26 was. So now when I undo the first three moves with F inverse, E, F. Oops, that's actually not F anymore because 2017 is now the front face, F. And then I have to do the, uh, the, the D move as the last part of the commutator. It's kind of like the, the A move is F inverse, E inverse, F. The B move is D inverse. The A inverse move is F inverse, E, F. And the B inverse move is just D. Anyway, that's definitely worth practicing. Uh, here it is on an actual Rubik's Cube. So here's the actual cube. And I want to put one where two is and two where three is, and three where one is. So I'm going to do the eight moves, F inverse, E inverse. See, I do the top players, then move the top back, F. Now I have the one in place. Uh, the two's been sent out to wherever. If I undo it, everything's back to where it started. The two came back from where it was to that, that place where the one was. Do it again now. Instead of undoing it right now, I'm going to put the 3 where the 1 is. Now when I undo it, the 3 goes back to where the 1 started like it wanted to. The 2 goes back to where the 3 is now. And then when I go back, the 2 goes to where the 3 uh, started and the 3 move uh, swap is out. The way this plays out in puzzle number 16, uh, since we've learned how to get the corners at a permute the corners and or and orient the corners uh, the way the edges would work are these 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 blue numbers so for instance maybe you want to put number four where up here in its proper position and put the 18 there if you watch when I hit this you'll see it's gonna move the four the 18 and the eight those cubes into these three places or at least one on the middle layer and two on the bottom layer and then it's going to do that eight move pattern that we just saw. You'll see, here's some moving around, a setup move. And now you can kind of see it doing, you see that E and E inverse move happening? Now, um, I want to put number six over here. Now, for practical purposes, I'll let you know that sometimes it's easier to not try to do too much. Like, yes, I can put the six here. And yes, I can put the 24 where it belongs, and that's great. But sometimes it's a little bit hard to make a setup move for that. Sometimes you just put the 6 into its place and just put the 24 just anywhere that's not already, you know, like I could put it over here at least. Let's just say for whatever reason. If it's easier for me to put the 24 somewhere besides where it belongs, as long as it's not ousting someone who's already in its right place, just want to, for practical purposes, it's kind of hard to um, fix two cubes at a time. So I just wanted to, to show you that. Like maybe I would go, eight goes here. And maybe it's just easy. Just put the 16 somewhere convenient. At least the eight will get fixed up. You'll see this in practice in a few minutes. I'm going to show you on a cube. Uh, now let's just say I'm an expert that can fix two at once. So 10 goes to 24. 
24 needs to go over here. You can watch what it does now. You're going to see that those eight moves happen. It does a little bit of setup, and then you're going to see the, um, once you see that middle edge slice move there, and there it is moving back. And I'll finish this thing up. 10, 11, number 12 needs to be where the uh, 16 is. And the 16 needs to go here. What's funny is that all these um, blue ones are, oh no, they're not all right side up. I think, the, yeah, you have a couple of upside down numbers. The eights actually, uh, the eights actually upside down, even though it doesn't seem to be. Um, hmm. I wonder if something went wrong there. Six might have a bug that I need to fix because I believe I had already fixed up the six. So one of my patterns uh, might have been off. Let's just see what happens here. And the 16 goes to the position 22. Um, it wants to, I can't swap just two things, so I have to send the 22 elsewhere. I'll just put it in this spot where the 20 was. And finally, the 20 wants to go here, and the 26 wants to go there. So by doing a bunch of three cycles, sometimes, sometimes you can fix up three things with a three cycle if it just so happens that those three things need to be swapped around. But you could always get at least one thing fixed or two. It, depends. it really depends how much work you want to do with, do you want to put the three things? Are you able to get the three things that need to be swapped into like this position and then one in the middle layer and two in the bottom layer. Sometimes that can be kind of annoying and then you have to remember what you did to undo it. I'll show you that in practice, but as you can see, this cube happened to be practically done. Just a couple of uh, edge flips needed and that's the subject of the next video. Now I'll show you this on a real cube. So I have the corners permuted and oriented properly. Now I have to start, see that white and orange? It wants to go right over there. So I'm going to do the eight move pattern. I'm going to move the white orange into its proper place. And this, this piece that's red and green, I'm just going to put it wherever. I'm going to put it next to it. So I'm only fixing one piece now. And now I have, as you can see, the orange white is in the proper place. Now I see a green white. He wants to go over here. So I'm going to send him into that spot. It's set up for it. I don't want to mess up the, the orange, so I'm going to put him into this other spot across. So I do the three moves, but now I do twice as the B move and undo it and undo that. Now the green's in the right place. The orange is still there. That other piece got sent elsewhere. Here's another white. It's white and red. It wants to go there. Um, I'm going to send it there. And this is a sneaky thing. I'll fix up two pieces because the white red, the the the, arm, the yellow red wants to go up there. So I can actually fix two pieces at once if I can put that that green that green yellow into the bottom layer. I can do this eight move thing. So I'm going to do this and then move uh, it all the way to the bottom. Now I have both pieces on the very bottom there. So now when I do the three move thing, I'm going to put the white, uh, the white red into its right spot. Now I'm going to bring this guy around and undo it. But now I have to undo those moves that I just did to set it up. So I do B2 U inverse. And now I've actually, you see, now not only do I have the red white in place, but the um, red yellow is also in place. So I'm making good progress here. Uh, there's one more white that needs to be fixed. It's the um, blue and white one. The yellow blue is there. Those want to get swapped. So that's kind of annoying because I can only do a three swap. So what I'm going to do, I also have to be careful. When I put the white and blue, I want to put it into the 
I'm going to put it into the middle layer. And I don't want to mess up. I'm, I'm going to send the, uh, the yellow blue somewhere. So by doing this move, I get to I get to now send see that that piece that yellow piece there I'm going to send the blue yellow into that spot because that spot's not already fixed so I do the eight moves and now I have to undo the moves I did to sort of set up that move and now all the edge pieces on the white are fixed now I'll move on to the yellow so I look at the yellow, and the, the yellow red's in place. Um, I see that I like to look in the middle layer for a piece that has yellow. So here I see a yellow, uh, yellow green, and it wants to go over there with the yellow green in the yellow green spot. So I go ahead, I put him in there. The the red green wants to go in that other spot, I think. No, we're just sending him out of the way. So now the yellow green is is correct. Now I look. What do I see here? I see the the that yellow blue wants to go over over into the yellow blue spot. And I'm going to send whatever's in that spot over to where that red piece is because he's not in the right place anyway. So I get the yellow blue in, and then he goes into that spot. So now the yellow blue is fixed. Now I think I'm down to just three pieces that need to get fixed. Everyone's in their right home on the yellow. It's just the middle layer. There's four pieces and edges in the middle layer. This is a, this is the hardest uh, this is the hardest part now. So I have three pieces in the middle layer, uh, and let's take a look. The green red's already fixed, but the red blue wants to go over here, and the blue orange wants to go over here, and the green. Oh, here's a good idea. I'm going to put rip up the sticky part of a post-it note, and put ones on one of the edges. Two's on another one. And these are these are going to be the three pieces that need to get to a three cycle on because it's going to be hard to keep track of these. We really wish one was on the bottom and two two are on the bottom and one was in the middle. So I don't quite have that. So the one wants to go where the two is. So what I need to do is get two of these on the bottom. I'm going to do that and I'm going to write down what I do because I'm going to have to undo it at the at the end. So R got to think about how to do this carefully because every move might move two of those sticker pieces. Let's see what I do. Okay. It looks like I do L minus. That's going to move that two to the bottom bottom layer and then I'm going to do a, a, a B minus now the two and the three are both on the bottom layer now I'm going to get the one into where the two is and the two to where the three is I do that by doing the three moves to get the one where the two was now I'm going to do a, a D move to move the 3 where the 1 is. And then I can undo that move. The 2 goes where the 3 is. And then I have to do the inverse of that second move. Okay, now I need to undo my setup because those things weren't always on the bottom. So I'm going to do uh, B and L. And now I've done it. I've got all the edges in their proper location, and some of them are oriented just by, by luck. So about 75% of the cube is actually done. We just have one more video, which is flipping uh, the two edges, or flipping edges. Again, this is not easy. I know it's pretty confusing, but uh, 
It's worth it.